Do you know that from 72 to 75 percent of the drilled wells worldwide are produced by a second root bombing system? In this episode, we will demonstrate the primary components and operation of a second root bomb. Second root pumps consist of surface and subsurface equipment. Surface equipment is responsible for transformation of the rotary motion of the prime movers into reciprocating motion. While the subsurface equipment are responsible for suction and displacement principle for the formation fluids, which will be discussed in more details during this episode. The operation of the second rod starts from the prime mover, which provides the necessary power for operation. This power is transmitted through the gear reducer assembly to the crank. Gear reducer is used to reduce the high revolution per minute of the motor to be suitable for the bump. The crank, pitman, and walking beam assembly is used to convert rotational motion into reciprocating motion. The crank may also contain a counterbalance which balances out the weight of the sucker rod string. The horse head is used to ensure that the upward pull on the sucker rod string is vertical at all times to avoid bending moment loads. The polished rod and stuffing box combine to maintain a good liquid seal at the surface and those force fluid to flow into the T-connection just below the stuffing box. Moving on to the subsurface equipment, it operates through an upstroke downstroke cycle. The main components of the subsurface equipment are a dynamic plunger with its traveling valve and a stationary working barrel with its standing valve. During upstroke, a suction pressure is resulted at the standing valve of the working barrel forcing that valve to move upward and enable the flow of formation fluid to the inside of the working barrel. The traveling valve is held closed by the weight of the overlying fluid column. During downstroke, the standing valve is held closed due to the downward force created from the movement of the plunger. However, the traveling valve is pushed by the underlying fluids inside the working barrel. So, they find their passage inside the plunger and displacing the overlying fluid towards the surface. The volume of fluid exits the well to the surface is equal to the volume of fluid entered from the working barrel to the plunger. If you liked this episode, please support us by hitting the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.